Okay, welcome to the third part of this tutorial series. In this video, we are going to uh, just carry on with what we were doing, basically. Um, first thing we're going to do is fill in each of these conditions. Um, and what we're going to do here, uh, in this sort of section, is define two new arrays, new size and source position. Um, new size is going to be the sort of scaled down size of the original image, but still in its original aspect ratio, so it won't be stretched. Um, and source position will be a uh, the x and y coordinates that we are going to sort of start copying the image from, which I will explain when we get to the actual copying process bit. Okay, uh, new size is by far the simplest, so let's do that one first. Uh, let's just define a new variable, new size equals array. Um, this array we're going to give it is we're going to give it two elements. The first one, remember here, the image is higher than it is um, wide. That makes sense. It's it's um, well, no, it's higher. The image it's not that it's higher than it is wide. It's higher than the thumbnail is high for the given width. Okay, that might hopefully that made sense. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is fit the width of the image to the width, and then work out the new height. Um, scaled to that width so it won't be stretched as I already said so what we're going to do is the oh the zero the first element in the array is going to be the width and the second one is going to be the height so to clear that up okay so the first thing we're going to do is fit the width so we're just going to set that as thumb uh, width like so but we're going to spell thumb right and the other key the height is going to be something and that something is going to be um, thumb width, so thumb width divided by thumb no thumb width. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, th sorry. Um, okay, yeah, sorry. Thumb width. Yeah, thumb width divided by source width, which was in the source size array, and it was the zero key. Let's just spell size right. Okay, so what that will do is get the, um, <laughs> yep, um, what that will do is sort of get the amount that we need to reduce the size by as a sort of percentage decimal, so it'll be like 0 0.8 if the thumbnail is sort of 80% the size of the original image, if the thumbnail, thumbnail needs to be, sorry. Um, so what we need to do then is multiply that by the height of the source images or source image to get the sort of same percentage reduction in the um, height as well. Uh, so we can now multiply this by source size one, which was the height. Uh, so that's it for the new size array for the um, higher condition. Um, what I'm going to do is just sort of tidy this up a bit by placing it all on one line make it look a bit more compact like so so now this is the first element and this is the second element okay so um, now we are going to do the same thing for the wider case um, it's actually very similar although we are fitting the height and setting the width dynamically um, so it's basically the opposite <laughs> so let's just set the new new size array here equal to array and what we're going to do is something dynamic and then here we're just going to set this height to thumb height like so and this something dynamic is going to be basically the same thing as we've already had so I'm not going to explain it again I'm just going to type it out so we have thumb width divided by source size 1 multiplied by source size 0 not 9 also thumb. Okay, so that is that basically. Again, it's calculating the size reduction and then multiplying by the original width to get the new width. So again, I'm just going to tidy this up a bit neater by putting it all on one line, like so. And then for the same shape case, this is very simple. We're just going to set the new size equal to the thumbnail size because the image doesn't need to be scaled in any way. It can just be set directly. 
if we let the same, if we set one of these, like if we did that, um, this sort of maths would produce the actual width of the thumbnail. Uh, but it's a bit, a bit more efficient not to do all this maths all the time, if we don't need to, that is. So what I'm going to do is just set new size equal to an array, as, as always. And we're going to set this to thumb width and thumb height without that and spelled right. So that's we have now defined the new size array, uh, which is going to be the new size of the image, as I already explained. Just check it for syntax errors. Let's see there are none. Doing well. Okay, so once we've done that, we want to define this source position array. We call this src underscore pos source pos source push. Can't really say that. Uh, okay, so let's do that now. Source pos equals array, and then we are going to define this as for the higher case anyway. Um, we're going to start. Uh, well, this is I've sort of already explained it. It's the x y position that we're going to take the thumbnail from. If that makes sense. So. It's a bit more complicated than we had before, but let's just go with it for now, at least, anyway. So, um, if the image is higher, we want to start from the very left, which is the zero position. And then we want to start from sort of um, the full image height minus the thumbnail height uh, divided by two, basically, uh, because that will give us, um, what will that give us? That will give us uh, well, if we if we take the full image height, full uh, the scaled full image height, sorry, I should say, so this new size height, um, and take that away from no, and then and then from that take away the thumbnail height. That'll give us the full amount that needs to be cropped off the top and the bottom. And then when we divide that by two, um, what we end up with is. Um, uh, what is it? We end up with sort of the height of one border, which is good. That's all we need. We want to start from one border down, basically. So let's do that now. Let's just set this equal to um, the what is it? The um, new size, new size uh, height was the one position. Take away the thumb height. Let's just stick that in brackets. And we're going to divide it by two, and that's that done. Okay, so let's just put this back on one line as usual, make it look a bit neater. And then we're going to do the same thing again for the other one, for the wider case. But we're going to be working with the width, not the height. So let's just define this now as source position equals array. Uh, the first, you see, now we're going to be scaling the. We're going to want to start from the top because we're fitting the height. Uh, so the height has to be start from zero. Um, and the width, we have to crop off the sides. So basically it's the same as we had before. So what I'm going to do here is uh, brackets. Um, we're going to have the new size 0 minus the thumb width. And then we're going to divide that by 2 to get only one of the bits we're cropping off. The second parameter, <coughs> second element in the array is going to be 0. And for the same shape case, they are both zero because we're starting from the top left corner. So we're just going to define source position post as an array of two zeros, like so. Oh dear, cancel. Do save it. Okay, so let's test that for syntax errors, and there are none, which is a good thing. Okay, so once we have defined all these variables. Um, what we want to do is, um, well, one thing we do need to do is make sure that the new size isn't less than zero. I mean, isn't less than one. Because if you try and create, um, if you try and create an image that is um, the size of zero, you get a broken image. Page people output an error, I believe. So we don't want that. We want to always show an image, even if they upload a ridiculous aspect ratio, or just try and break it for fun, I guess you could do. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do here is just make sure that the both of the new size elements 
uh, the elements in the new size array are not less than one. So we're just going to do a quick if statement on each one. So we're going to do if new size zero is less than one, new size zero equals one. Um, I'm not just I'm just doing it on one line like this because it's such a simple sort of thing. I mean, you could equally do this, but it's an extra two lines, three or four lines that you don't need. Um, I've also omitted the curly brackets from here, even though I have previously said that I wouldn't do that. So, sorry for the inconsistency, but the advantage is that you can have them both just on two lines, like so, and it still looks neat. So we also need to check the one, like so. Okay, so once we've got to this point, we should have the new size of the image and the source position that we want to start copying from. So I can check this now if I just do print underscore r of the new size. I really can't type this word. Okay, new size. And also, um, let's do it as the um, let's do the source position array as well. See if that's worked right. Okay, so let's just reload our page. You see, we get these two arrays. Um, they look about right to me. Um, this one was the new size, um, so the image has been resized to 250, 250 pixels wide. It's fitted the width, and the height has been set dynamically to that. And then we're set. We're starting from the left zero, and starting from 87.5 pixels from the top, which I believe you can actually do half pixels for GD. Um, I think I did round it down in the in my original version of this, or round it at least. Um, but let's just see what happens with the not rounded position. Um, if we do need to round it, we can just come back and do that later on. So this looks like the right output anyway. So let's carry on. Um, remove these. What we are going to do here is create a new image to copy the original image onto because we want not a resized image because now I mean we could just um, sort of copy the image resize the image directly but we need to we, what we need to do is copy it onto a new one that has a fixed size so we need to create a new image I'm just going to call it thumb do image create create true color spelt wrong um, and then we're going to set the width to thumb width and the height to thumb height. The um, image create true color function takes two parameters, the width and the height, as I have demonstrated here. Just make sure I've spelled that right. I have, amazing, good, cool. Carry on, good, good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is copy the image, um, use the image copy resampled function. This function takes, uh, I think, two, four, six, eight, 10 parameters, which is a lot, so actually we'll leave that till the next part because I don't think I'll be able to explain it adequately in the remaining time. So join me in the next part and we will go over the sort of final part of this script. Don't worry, there are only about, what, 12 more lines to write. So yeah, thanks for watching and join me in part, whatever part is after this one.